Yeah, and rightly so. And Niall, just it, it's all our final minor final weekend coming up, and we're just curious to know what would your minor memories with uh, with Limerick or even at the club be. My minor memories, very very fond memories. I, I think for every lad who starts off um, playing in county, I suppose in our house here at home, my brothers have kind of preceded me to come on to play senior. So you'd obviously hope the right of passage would be to play obviously with your club and even to play a little bit of Hearty Cup and obviously following on from that then you'd hope to make your minors and we had great memories uh, at that time Limerick wouldn't have been as successful as what they are now and maybe not as well structured even at that point but we would have beaten Tipperary in a Munster final replay but McCurlist but on the first game actually it was played out in Brough and uh, Owen Kelly happened to be obviously Owen Kelly was Owen Kelly he was uh, his last year minor his fourth year minor and he was marking Owen Foley and we had a drawn game it was 4-13 to 2 19. We scored a 4 13. Owen Foley happened to be man of the match on our side, but Owen Kelly of the 4 13 scored, I think it was 2 11, 2 12. It was just incredible. And um, look, we happened to beat him in a replay, got to a Munster minor final. And if you're to ask me what my memory was, it was actually a very light hearted memory. Uh, again, like that, Limerick hadn't been to a minor final in eight or nine years. And uh, I remember we went up uh, on a minibus up to the match, and uh, we had a little bit of a warm up in St. Pat's. but. The coach at the time was a guy called Val Moran, who would have played in the 84 All Ireland, the Limerick Minor All Ireland, the Limerick, a real great character and all the rest. And I think we were coming up through the square and Tipper playing Cork the same day, and we were we were freaked out, obviously, by the, the volume of crowd. We hadn't been prepared for, for that. And I'll never forget it, Val pulling the mooner, going up, going up the bus <laughs> up the square. I just said, if it happened today, he just that was his way. He was dealing with 16 or 17 year old lads, and, and the coach pulling the mooner on the way up to the match. Uh, I think for a lot of us, unfortunately, Cork hammered us the same day. Uh, Tomas Valeri was playing, and I think that was probably the highlight of the day for, for a lot of us. But uh, look, it's a special occasion, and I've kind of tuned into a good few of the minor matches, to be honest. Um, I haven't seen the most final in person, and I was very, very impressed by Tipperary. Um, I, I honestly, if you were to ask me, and again, it's not that I've seen all their games or saw all the games in the 20s, but as a tip person, I'd probably be looking a lot more to this minor team for the guys you're going to get maybe coming through as seniors. And I suppose sometimes you talk about generational hurlers coming through, and I suppose in tip, the argument to be maybe the last five or six years that they mightn't have had those generational hurlers. But I think in Ewan Murray at centre forward, um, I haven't seen him maybe two years ago in a fail final for Durla Sog. I just think he's an incredible hurler. And uh, again, he's backed around it, even up front, Stefan Tobin, I think is up from Carrick and Owen Dugan from Money Gall, really, really impressive throughout the year. So it promises to be a great game because to be fair to Kenny in, in Jake Mullen, they are probably one of the possible generational star and it doesn't take a fool to realise what kind of uh, stable he comes out of. And even the way he hurls, he, he hurls like Adrian. So um, that's going to be a great game. And I suppose home advantage, maybe it, it will probably matter a lot even for, uh, for Kenny. Okay, well, delighted to say we're joined by Carl Barrett, Tipperary hurler. Carl, we're talking about the, um, I suppose, minor memories and that. What comes to mind for you when you think about hurling minor for Tipperary or for the club? Oh, uh, can you hear me all right? You can. Yeah, all good. Um, I have nightmares of Tony Kelly and Cullum Galvin uh, for my minor my, my minor career. Um, we were beaten by Clare both years by a pint. And the same then, the three years under 21, by, uh, by their group of players that won the that uh, won their three in a row as well. So yeah, my minor memories wouldn't be as wouldn't be as uh, pleasant as the minors at the minute. But um, yeah, no, look, minor hurling is is, is unbelievable. It's really enjoyable. But you're coming like... to us from a u- unique location, Carl. By all accounts, I don't think we've yeah. ever had anyone in your location doing a show. No, less, the longer this digger is stopped, the, the more money you're going to have to pay. So she's, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Carl, I, I'm nice to see you looking so clean. I was thinking, eh? Jeez, last time usually when I meet you, you're, you're destroyed. If it's not bloody, it's, it's, it's crap. Yeah. I tell you, <laughs> when we get off the call here, there's a couple of jobs that needed to be done there. You're, you're, you're hard meant to get around the place to finish off a couple of jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, um, just to, like in terms of this this Saturday, um, you have your own club mate, Carl O'Reilly, involved there. Like that's a huge honour for the club. Oh, savage! She's un- unbelievable. Like, Carl is a super young man, and we've turned on Ryan there as well midfield. Um, I look, it was very, it was, it was lovely the way it worked out the Munster Championship, uh, being named after John Dyle as well, and to have a Holy Crossman captain and to win it, like it was, uh, it was really, really ex- ex- uh, extraordinary for the club. Um, but uh, they're two, two super boys now, in fairness, and they go about their business very, very quietly. Like Kyle is, um, doesn't say a whole pile, but he just goes and get, gets his work done. Um, 
so yeah, no, we're really looking forward, and the Holy Cross is is buzzing with, with them as well because we had a couple of we had a couple of uh, representatives on the twenty panel as well, and you've the two boys coming forward. So in fairness, there's lots of talk in Tipperary about Holy Cross coming, um, because we've lots of very good young lads. Like they, we won the under seventeen and under nineteen the last couple of years, um. So it's it's very exciting times in Holy Cross at the minute. So look, hopefully, hopefully the boys get another medal and another uh, another cup under their belt this weekend. In terms of balancing things, Carl, between having a coffee shop and being up in a digger, how do you keep everything going? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Do I keep it going? Maybe it's all an act. Who knows? Um, <laughs> no, sure, look, look I, I'm very fortunate in my, in my job that, it, that I, I, uh, I have time to give to other things between tip and the coffee shop. And look, I'm going building a house in the next, in the next month or so. I'm here digging a, digging a trench. Now I'm more bloody knocking half the wall here, really, if I'm to be honest with you. Look, someone has to do it. But um, yeah, look, Look, it's it's life, isn't it? Look, the older you get, you have, the, you have other commitments and responsibilities. You just have to get on with it. It's like Niall milking cows in the morning, noon, and night for the last God knows how many years when he was hurling with Limerick as well. So that's, that's just the joys of it. It's, it's grand for you two sitting there talking rubber most of the day, isn't it? <laughs> hey, the key the key cotton is to get, get paid for talking rubber if at all possible. Yeah, she's a Niall. I don't know you getting paid. <laughs> I, I kind of am getting paid, but it's stayed here as well as I'm sitting down. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Niall, did you ever um, miss training due to milking cows now that he brings it up? Because I, I know of a lad who didn't accept a county minor call up because he was too busy <laughs> milking cows and doing silage. It, it used to be an issue here. Uh, did you ever miss training? Luckily enough, because of the boss man here, um, you never had to miss him, but. I actually remember there, like springtime used to be a nightmare. I used to hate the National League and lads would be talking to Jesus, the training and the heavy block training. But like we used to go in there, there was mornings there, you could go in three and four hours on a Sunday morning before a league match and the cows at home cabin. And, and I'm not being smart about it, like as in, as Carl said, life gets in the way. And there was often a couple of managers there and he'd be trying to explain to them, I said, lads, I, I actually can't be there to sit down to, like, this is, like what Carl is saying there, to kind of be talking rubber, like, you know, I, I'll be there on time and I'll have the breakfast gap, but like, there was jobs to be done. And I'll tell you what really probably finished me was I, I, my, I, I probably, I finished up in 13, but I kind of went back in 14 and ended up playing the start of 15. And what finished me there was you were, you were involved in school and you were, you were kind of coaching Harty and you were playing and you were back in Limerick, you were training and our own father had gotten out of the cows because he had no support at home, but I got back into him for my last three or four years playing in Limerick, but what finished me off one Thursday evening was we were abroad in Rakeel and it was flipping tires. So that was the period when, like, obviously it was the SNC of the time or whatever else. And I was going home and I said to myself, what the fuck are you at here? Abroad fucking flipping tires. There was cows to be calved. It's the only time you should be flipping tires. There should be plastic underneath and be fucking covering a pit. But, uh, yeah, actually, look, it doesn't happen too often. I, I know a couple of Hughes brothers above in um, Monaghan, but they had a robot. I think the tip boys there. I think there was some of the um, Killangan boys were. Oh, yeah, there was one of the boys yeah, was, was milking there as well at some stage. And I look, it's it, it's tricky. But as Carl says there, like, and again, Carl is probably the best stage of his life. Where, like, obviously you prioritise hurling. It, it's your be all and end all. But there comes a point when life has kind of kicked through a little bit. And do you know what I mean? If that's building houses, starting families, starting businesses, then. Um, it's a serious, you can't keep your life on hold forever. And I suppose in our case at home, we had a family farm and the time was now and it wasn't the case of waiting for another couple of years to finish. But um, yeah, look, it, it, I suppose it toughens you up. If you ask me, if I was truth be known, I think lads are at this physical job. I think you, you have to make allowances for them in terms, of, um, in terms of how they train and what they do. And if you don't, I think it's foolhardy because you're burning the candle at both ends, like, you know. How have you found that call? Like I, I would say the same. We're we're farmers back at home as well. You're um you're doing stuff during the day, maybe the other lads aren't. But a lot of managers uh wouldn't understand maybe that as Lion says you're flipping tires or you're running a couple of k around the field after cattle or whatever. Like I don't think there's a lot. It's very difficult for lads to be able to do that kind of thing at inter county now just because of the demands of it all. A hundred percent. Like inter county is. Like it's it's even further on than what it was five years ago. Like it, it it's so he'll be back. I think we could turn this into a farming discussion here in the meantime while we're waiting for there's no harm. Go on, jump in. Yeah, we have you now, Carl. Fire away, Carl. No, no, no audio, unfortunately, there at the minute. Um, but it is, Niall, I know the two Currys were doing it in Waterford, Waterford footballers, Stephen Curry 
and uh, Jason Curry, but it is something that's very difficult. He would have had the farmer from Glen Row, Mike O'Brien. Wasn't I just, it? yeah, it's just funny as you're saying it. Uh, we'd often be talking. We, we, we've uh, there'd be a couple of colourful Monday morning discussions, and we'd be often talking about it. But uh, like there was, I suppose at that time, I suppose Donny, Donny Ryan, the Dozer, and, and Bangers uh, from Glen Row, they'd, they'd be in the one car coming in. And I suppose they were probably the only two full-time farmers at that stage, and, and they'd argue they're still the only two full-time farmers. But there was a couple of cameos, like number one, I suppose, when the gym started coming in towards the end of their tether, the two boys would be leaning up in the corner, and they couldn't, they had no more time for this gym. But one very funny story was, uh, I think in Dave Mahidi's time, obviously, he'd been a very progressive trainer or whatever else, and I think his daughter, Tracy, used to come in to do the urine samples, or as we said, she was taking the piss out of us. Um, but says, uh, I'll never forget there was one, there was one, uh, there was one uh, summer's day. I said it's obviously mid June, very close in championship, and obviously, we're very serious like that. I suppose, like, the more hydrated you are, the more focused you are, the better you're going to perform, and all the rest. All right, so the two boys were after covering the silage pit at home, and they were red, raw, burnt, right. So, sure, the idea was everyone's given the bottle before they start the training, and uh. So naturally, given the day that was in it, most samples were going to be dehydrated anyway. But I saw the two points given the sample. Not physically, no, we saw the sample. Sorry to clarify that. Uh, I saw the sample, and the thing may have been fucking TK lemonade. It was red, that's where it could be. So the boy says, Hold up a second here now. If we present this, lads, that we could be in jeopardy there for starting Sunday week, should not do the boys any, only to empty out four fifths of it anyway, and obviously fill up the rest of it with tap water. So, end of training comes anyway, and training wasn't going great or whatever else. And next thing was, Tracy came and presented the results. And, like, obviously, the stick to beat us was, was with, like, we weren't hydrated. But they picked out two exceptions to the rule anyway. So the, but there's two semi pros there, Mike O'Brien and Downey Ryan. The only two hydrated. <laughs> sure, uh, Steve, you wonder what the scene the two boys were. <laughs> like, you know? But uh, yeah, look, that's, that's, that's uh, they're, they're, they're funny stories. I'm sure they're there now, but you just probably don't hear them as much. Carl, is there anything you can tell us about um, anything, any particularly fond memory you have in the tip camp? Maybe somebody that's gone out of camp now, and I was funny yarn or anything like that, things that happened down through the years. But Bulls was telling us actually recently about. Was oh, he he was off, was he saying? <laughs> no, no, it, it was tame enough now, to be fair. He just said before the 14 final, Eamon O'Shea was given it large in the dressing room or whatever, and he said he looked over at you and you looked over him and the two of you were basically splitting splitting yourselves laughing. Everybody else, it was full bore serious or whatever. But any uh, any particular, you know, fond memories stand out? Yeah, I used to love I used to love uh, the, the gym sessions. Like, like John, you come in. Gone again. Fucking thing. You're all right, you're all right, fire away. Ah, those feckers ringing me here, left, right, and center. But I uh, know I used to love uh, when you come in as a young lad, the older lads, like you'd be going trying to lift more than them and slagging them and all this. But I remember we were doing some deadlift one day, and I said to, I said to Shane McGrath, just messing, I said, Hey, the, weight, the girls' weights are over there. And he walked on and came back, he said, Hey, what are you lifting there? I don't know what it was. And he just said, That's not going to put the ball over the bear for you. And just walked, walked off left and let me lie. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, but like he, he's right, he's right too. Like to be honest, he was actually dead right because no matter how many most gym sessions you do and all that, it's still not going to puck the ball over the bar. He was he was very spot on, and I no, think he was also thinking at me that I was never going to score either. So <laughs> there's, de there's there's definitely a balance to it all. Colin, we won't keep you too much longer because you know you're under pressure there. But just looking at the the championship, obviously unfortunate that you'd love to still be involved. But how do you see? Of the, the four that are left, how do you see it's kind of fair? And you've obviously faced off against three of them already this year. Yeah, like, like, looking at like if you were going on form, like I like I would have I would have said the biggest test for a Limerick would be Cork in a semi final. But having looked at the Cork's last two performances and looking at Limerick, in I kind of my my head is kind of thinking me that Limerick will, will have too much. But I do think if Cork are to get over the line, it is against Limerick in a semi final. I don't think anyone will bait Limerick in the final. To be honest with you. And I originally would have said uh, Kilkenny would um, would beat Clare because Clare seemed to struggle at the minute in the last two years up up in Crow Park and against Kilkenny. But I thought Clare were very very. Their final go this weekend, and what might uh, what might decide it? I think, like I think, in fairness, I think Tipperary were very lucky to get over Galway. I think um, I, I think we were very lucky. We I wouldn't say we robbed Galway, but I, I think Limer Galway were fairly very very unlucky in it. I think winning that. 
and coming through something like that, I think will stand stand to Tipperary very much so. It kind of reminds me a bit of like the the All Ireland semi final we beat Wexford in nineteen when you had so many things go against you and it was a game that you shouldn't wa- have won. I think I think that really stood to us in the scene or in twenty nineteen going against actually Kenny. So I, I think that will stand to Tipperary. Haven't got over that. It was it was a bit like Galway were very, very strong. Like that, that young lad full forward that Cahill was marking was extraordinary. Like um like he's built like a senior hurl. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised. He nearly he nearly started lining out for Galway now. Um I think that will stand hugely to to tip and I think I think tip will get through for by a pint or two, but I don't think there'll be much in it. Just last mm-hmm. one, Cotton, and I won't put you on the spot because I know obviously you're still playing, but of the players that you mark that are no longer playing inter county, who would you say was the most difficult to mark? Like we're looking at the likes of well, you might have come across nine at some stage. Henry Shefflin, um, there's plenty more lads. Who of the lads no longer playing inter county, who would have been the most difficult? Um, I'd say in fairness to give Shefflin his due, I think Shefflin will be up there one of the toughest. Um even before you go on you before even I went marking was like there would have been a lot of thought about Shefflin, obviously, and that kind of brings its own pressure as well, because you're marking one of the greats in fairness to him. Um yeah, I think Henry would be up there. Like like Hoggy sure is still flying away. Like in the current in the current game, I'd say in fairness, Galan would be up there. But and what I love about Galan is Galan kind of offers you different things. He offers you a bit of cuteness, a bit of skill, and there's also a bit of dirt to Aaron as well. He's not afraid to dish it out like. Um and that's what I like about him. And he'll <laughs> he'll give you a bit of guff too. Like he kind of offers you so many different dimensions. Like he really he challenges you in different ways. Compared to other lads, I think he, all rounder he he's the most challenging you will meet because he it's 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 not just the physical side, it's not just the bit of the bit of dirt side, but at the dark arts, but it's also his skill level is extraordinary and in the air like he offers so many different challenges. But he would be definitely in the current game, and then I, in fairness to Shefflin, I'd put him up there. Just the last last one because you're after teeing me up there. Do, do you love that type of thing when a lad is really giving it back to you as well? Hundred percent, yeah, hundred percent. That's what I like. I love the, I kind of love the mental challenge first and more, foremost, and then the physical challenge, absolutely. And uh, Aaron, Aaron, and Ferris, me offers all of those. Like, so I do, I do enjoy marking him. And from what I believe from that, I think he likes marking me too. So, <laughs> Paul, thanks very much for joining us, and uh, hope you're not stuck in the digger for too long. Lad, sound as well. I'll send you on the, the diesel bill. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Scott. Good man. Okay, great to have Carl on there. Yeah, Niall, actually, from your playing days. Who did you find? I don't know who's memorable to be up against in a one v one. Uh Tony Brown to me was my kryptonite. Anyway, there's probably a lot of kryptonite, but there were certain guys there you might get something off them. Like you know, what I mean, obviously, maybe no different to now. Um, you know, the generation we were coming up against the great Cork teams. So obviously, you come across your John Gardner's and Sean O's, Tom Kenny's. Uh, so the Kenny team was on the road at that stage. Uh, JJ and Tommy, you'd have come up against him, but I just for me it was Tony Brown. I just thought he could do it every which way. He was athletically, he was an athletic freak. Like when you think of it, Tony Brown played in county at forty years of age, forty mm. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that is, so uh, it, it's incredible. Like, and I know things have moved on a little bit since, but it's not to that extent. Um, I just thought Tony Brown he could cover more ground. He was greyhound. He could go forward. He could come back. Um, like when you think about it, was Tony Brown hurt of the year in nineteen ninety eight? Yeah. 98 and probably played his last game for Waterford. I know the one was fine in 10, but he was still there thereafter, wasn't he? I think he still playing till 14. Did he retire in 14, I think? 13 or 14, yeah. like that longevity. But this is what is it? I just couldn't get away from him. As in the other guys there, you might you might get a couple of balls off him, whatever it is. But on a personal level, look, I just couldn't get away from him. I thought he was an incredible hurler. And I suppose when you meet him then, like he's so, so down to earth and so ordinary and well by well by you and so if you met him in the street you probably wouldn't know that he was the, the star that he was but i think maybe even for that generation you're going on about maybe i suppose the players like when you when you think about what for team again and i know it's probably being often spoken about but to think that they have had no all ireland um you'd love to see how they tee up maybe against the teams of today like i, I think they'd be very credible opposition over the last six seven years for the kilkenny's and players and limericks i would imagine like Sure, when you look at Niles, they came up against two of the best teams. Like they came up against the great Cork team and the great Kilkenny team. It's probably it's listen, it'd be like if Kilkenny don't win a, an All Ireland over the next five years because they're coming up against Limerick the whole time, or if Clare don't win an All Ireland or win a Munster because they're coming up against one of the best teams of all time. There's probably just it's a lot to do with timing, really, isn't it? It is timing, yeah. And I, I even think the new format would have even particularly suited them again because you might beat them once, but you struggle to beat them twice, like and uh 
I suppose, look, they have forever, probably Ruth 07. So that was the year they felt they were at their peak. And Kilkenny weren't just at their ultimate peak there at that point. But um, uh, look, I said, that's water under the bridge. There was this, look, there was great hurlers there. Uh, and it was still of great hurlers now. So I suppose maybe, like, when you think about, again, even Waterford, like you're talking about swashbuckling, Milan and Ken McGrath and, you know, like Paul Flynn. Like, they were just, I suppose, a lot more colourful, weren't they? Yeah, and even though the teams right now, they're exceptionally gifted. And even the Limerick team, obviously, like, do you know what I mean? We're probably the Limerick team is probably more the more after the Kenny team and just that they're obviously their overall ability and their men, like their mentality monsters on top of everything like they're just machines. Whereas I think for Waterford, I think we all love them because they're a little bit flawed. Do you know what I mean? They, they sometimes let you down and I, I don't think there's any team that you could rightly say they're as colourful as what they are now. Like, and I think what they brought, to, I know it's probably gone off your original question, so I know I'm on a rent. But um, I suppose, look, everyone loved watching that Waterford team and, and for me, Tony Brown was, I uh, just... I thought he was just incredible. Early, like. And Niall, um, just why Cahill was referring to Brian Callan there, the full forward for Galway, and you know he looks an exceptional talent. And I'm thinking to prayer, you've mentioned you and Murray already, and a couple of other players have been mentioned. Jake Mullen. Uh, there's, I can't remember is it Mark or J uh, Jack O'Neill who's the forward for Clare. I keep mixing up those two lads between the minors and twenties. But just you know, from your vantage point, being involved in schools hurling and all that kind of stuff. Do you think the talent level now is is greater than it's ever been, or, or where are we at? Well, first of all, Electric Ireland, I would have, could have done with a new top from Electric Ireland there, let's like two of you. Uh, <laughs> nobody sent me the, they mustn't have known I was coming on to do it. Uh, I said the guy you were talking to there is referring to as Mark O'Brien from Clare. I'd say. Brian, I keep program. mixing them up. I know, let's for luck. Do your research, like, I know, but uh, <laughs> No, uh, so like, oh, sorry, I go back to the original question was, where do I see the, the level of talent, is it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I suppose, gosh, you're physically anyway, first of all, they're, they're, the lads are ready to, they're, they're coming off the conveyor belt, they're ready to roll at 18 or 19, like physically, look, you look at the legs on them, like their they're tree trunks right the way across, that's irrespective of counties. Um, even again, like mentally, they're way, way more mature, even in your dealings with them as hearty cup hurlers like there I, I never had that confidence to maybe even converse uh with coaches in the way that they had i wouldn't have had that to us knowledge or insight to tactically analyze what was going on i suppose even the confidence within the dressing rooms that you go to these guys are well capable of so was weighing up situations and being in the moment carrying out tactics so i suppose as a whole in terms of the package at i suppose look the hearties probably 19 my, do you know what I mean? At 17, 18, these guys have been exposed to the training age is far greater than what it would have been in years gone by. Um, I suppose my only, the only thing that the drawback that I see, and again, it's everybody has their own experience of the split seasons, how it's working. But again, even at underage level, I just think it's it's way off. I think I'd still prefer my minor to back to the under 18. Why? Because. I think when under 17, you have some guys who might be of a year young who would actually could be 15 years of age playing minor. All right, you're putting them into situations where, okay, well, they're looking into big stadiums. They tend to be on local television and your, and your clubbers and whatnot in early rounds. I think it's, it's an awful lot of added pressure. Um, I also think in terms of how I saw it here in Limerick and like, God, Limerick minor team were fine minor side, were really, really well prepared. But it was just what happened to be just they were John Fortune. They didn't win any game for the first time in a long time. But even to listen to how they were critiqued locally, I thought it was very, very unfair. I thought how the management were even critiqued, I thought it was very unfair. And I suppose the way I'd probably look at it is in old money, when you looked at minor, it tended to be the All Ireland semi finals was the first time you'd ever see him on television. All right. And like chances are that was the second, third week in August. Whereas now we're seeing minors on television in March a year earlier. So like there's a year and a half of a difference really in the age of the minors that we're, we're, we're critiquing and um, I just I just think it doesn't do anything to does, I don't think it does any positive really for young lads development to be honest um, I think you're, you're thrown into the spotlight too soon you're exposed maybe to uh, like you're exposed to a huge amount of tactical elements and things like that whereas you know, first and foremost in development of the young, lad, the young lads at that age and girls should be the, the skill development um so like again look i know again once again you're probably on the rant but i i'm not it, the, the talent has gone through the roof okay the ability has gone through the roof of 17 year olds 
But I would see that the minor should go back to under 18. And I've seen even at schools level, it's cutting across like the tail end of the Munster Leinster competitions and even the Crow Cup, the, the All Ireland colleges, it's cutting in across the early rounds of the minor championships. And as I said to you earlier, when you have management being critiqued in the way that they are, do you know what I mean? That puts a level of pressure on them. And with that pressure then comes wanting to have access to players. And then you're cutting across young lads in your school careers when, like, do you know what I mean? That should be their priority at that time. So whether that's moving it back to under 18, or a part of me also thinks, lads, with the inter-county senior season about to come to an end in three weeks' time, wouldn't this be a lovely time to have your early rounds of your Munster and Leinster championships? And as they move forward, have your All Ireland moving into maybe the first week in September just before they go back to schools? Do you know what I mean? And wouldn't that take a lot of pressure off young lads doing exams? Do young lads in transition years that don't tend to get to go on trips because they're afraid of missing training? And uh, so I said, look, it's a wonderful competition. Electric Ireland have done a brilliant job of sponsoring it. Um, I can give the home address after if you want to send down a top. For to join me as a, a man we'll who, sort that now. We'll sort the door. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> blue or white? Blue or white? I will. We'll take both there. Let's. Uh, the <laughs> one in the house, if you can wear the blue. <laughs> no, but look, it's a great competition. And I said, I um, John, I, I watched. I didn't happen to be at that Kenny Clare game, but we were away for the weekend, and we get two hours watching it, and uh, it was a thriller. It was a thriller of a match. Like, and as I said, to you, I, I think it wouldn't have filled the gap for the next six weeks. I wouldn't have filled more than filled the gap. Wouldn't it have been? Brilliant to watch it, and I don't think that's cutting across your split season either. And um, do you know what I mean? I said it, that's just if they are to stick with it as under seventeen, which again I think maybe just move it a little bit later, put it in after the after the Munster final, the provincial final start. Let's start your minor championships, and you get far bigger crowds because if they're in the month of March, there's so many matches on, people aren't getting to. Niall, I know you're a small bit cough for time, but I just want to ask you quickly about Limerick. Where do you see Limerick at? After coming through the Munster campaign, six in a row in Munster, everybody said if they're going to be caught, most people said if they're going to be caught, they're going to be caught in Munster. They weren't caught. They're exactly where they want to be. Like, um, is there a bit of re revenge on their minds as well going into that semi final? Yeah, well, as you said, look, they're probably exactly where you want to be. Is there revenge? Whether there is or whether there isn't, it's a psychological edge that they can use. I know that. Um, I know, look, Cork really, really enjoyed their win and they're well entitled to enjoy their win, no different to any other county. And I suppose, look, I suppose there was a little bit of, I won't say after some of the players, most definitely there wasn't, but I suppose the Limerick players were kind of, they were grey in the face after getting beaten. It was a huge, uh, it was a huge shock to them. And uh, I, suppose, I suppose they would have looked for a couple of nuggets in terms of what it felt like to lose the game. And they don't want to have that feeling again. So look, from that point of view, if they want to use revenge, I don't think they do use revenge, to be honest. They're so close to driven that revenge doesn't come into it. So, look, they're, I think they're at where they want to be. Um, there's scope for improvement in certain players. You have, like, Seamus, Sean Finn, these guys, Richie English, another guy into a bargain, all coming back from injury. So they are very positive on where they are. Um, a bit of pressure on Cork lads, isn't there? Is there? I would have like, said so, there? yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I suppose, like, they've... You know, you've been... They're going from one week they're out of the championship and within eight days they are now chief contenders for the All Ireland. So with that comes added pressure and maybe has that pressure maybe not helped how they've formed in the last two games. I suppose you could argue for and against. Look against Cork, they were twenty points to eleven up at forty five minutes gone. Look in any man's language, you're, you're going to coast home after that. And, and I know they stopped hurling then for a finish. So. Yeah, there'll be concerns, but I don't know if they're genuine concerns. I think a more genuine concern would be that uh, so Alan Connolly and Brian Hayes up front are serious, serious men when they're going right. And I was at that tip game, the or the, the couple of games there that, that they won, obviously. And um, they just haven't been as good lately. All right, so I suppose they'd want to get that right because Limerick aren't going to leave anything to chance. So um, it promises to be a very good game. I, I don't know if we want to get the repeat of of 18. Um, if we want to talk about the repeat of 21, well, that was 318 to 111 at half time. So I don't think any of us want the repeat of that either. But um, look, I, if truth be known, I think the other semi final is where everyone's interest will be will be thrown to. And um, again, with a three o'clock start for myself and Carl and the digger and the cows, John, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't bode well for getting up to Dublin for it. Like. <laughs> Niall, thanks so much for joining us and uh, hopefully we'll chat to you again in the not too distant future yeah. Cheers Niall, good man